Hello and welcome to this short introductory clip on the idea of directing groups in aromatic chemistry. So essentially a directing group can be thought of as the first substituent group or atom on a benzene ring whose chemical behaviour on that ring determines the positioning of a second substituent group or atom. So although the exact reasons behind it are slightly beyond the A-level specification, if you consider the first group that was there initially, it can either draw electrons from the delocalized pi system or move electrons into it. And therefore, this affects where on the ring the second incoming group can substitute. So if we look at it in general terms, you can see on the benzene ring in the bottom left of the screen there is a group called R. That can be any group at all. We're not going to go into, at this point, which group that happens to be. You can see that there's three positions it might uh, sit in. So any incoming second group could sit on position 2, position 3, or position 4. Now why haven't I mentioned 5 or 6? So if we remember that we actually count either way around the ring to ensure the lowest possible numbers in the name, position 2 can be in one of two places. Position 3 could also be in one of two places. But position 4 stays in the one place opposite carbon number 1. So let's look at this idea a bit more closely. The disubstituted arene is an aromatic compound with only two positions substituted. Therefore you name it by counting whatever direction gives the lowest numbers in that name. So applying the idea that your first substituent, let's call it substituent A here, um, is it carbon number one? Why don't you sketch examples two and three, the meta and di and para di substituted benzenes, um, with the correct carbon numbering? So pause the clip and try this now. So this would be the obvious way to do number two, but number three can be done either way round, like that, and that's because it's symmetrical. So it doesn't matter which way round you do it, you'll still get the same numbering. So if we look at some examples here, these three are obviously isomers of each other. And that's because they have the same molecular formula but different structural formulae. But because the substituents are in different positions relative to each other, they'd be called position isomers. So moving the naming process on a little bit, can you suggest an alternative name for this tri-substituted benzene? Have a careful think about it by looking at the way that the ones at the top of the screen are actually named. Did you come up with 2 chloroform nitromethyl benzene? So the way to think about it is that the methyl benzene part is not really reactive in its own right, but the chloro and nitro groups are functional groups because they bring new chemistry to the molecule. Therefore, this molecule is a disubstituted methyl benzene as opposed to a di-substituted benzene. So you'd start the numbering by putting carbon number 1 where the methyl group is, is um, situated and counting around from there. Um, in this case, counting clockwise to give yourself the smallest possible numbers in the name 2 and 4. So let's have a look now at how this would work in terms of reactions. So the most likely one you'll come across is multiple nitrations of the benzene ring. So let's look at mononitration first of all. Um, you need to think back and see if you can remember the uh, reagents and conditions. So pause for a second and see if you can work them out from memory. Hopefully it'll be only a couple of seconds before it comes to mind. So hopefully you came up with uh, concentrated nitric acid, concentrated sulfuric acid and 50 degrees C reflux. So if we look at further nitration, what we've got to think about is what are the reagents and conditions that cause this to happen? See if you can pause and have a think about this. So you are undergoing exactly the same reaction as before, but you want more of it to happen on the same benzene ring. So it's the same uh, reagents, but the conditions get hotter and hotter and hotter. So the, the, the more you heat it, uh, basically, the, the, the more nitrations that you get. 
What's interesting though is the position of the nitrations. So why do they go on to those positions and not the other ones? That's what the next part of the clip is going to be about. So methyl groups are electron donating or activating groups, so they direct to positions 2 and 4. They are said to be 2 4 directing or ortho para directing. So if we look at this diagram, for example, substituent R would be 2 4 directing. But going back the other way, if we were to assume R had a different identity, it's a different group, this time R is 3 directing. So if a substituent is electron donating, it directs to positions 2 and 4, like that. If it's electron withdrawing, it directs to position 3. So remember that you can count either way to ensure the lowest number. So position 3 could be in two places, just like position 2 could be in two places, like I've just highlighted on the diagrams. So we can use this idea in multi-step aromatic organic synthesis to control where the second substituent ends up by choosing what first substituent to put on the benzene ring according to where it directs. So when making salbutamol, which is found in asthma inhalers, you would start with phenol. And the OH group, group is 2,4 directing because it adds two electrons to de the delocalized pi system. So no surprises here. If you number the benzene ring up, you can see quite clearly that's, that's exactly what it's done because the substituents are on position 2 and position 4. So let's look at a molecule we came across a bit earlier, but put it into context. So starting with benzene, use the information in the table to suggest an order in which to substitute the nitro and chloral groups, explaining why. So starting with your nitrobenzene, um, or the nitrobenzene being the first substituent, the nitro group is 3 directing. So the next thing to do is to chlorinate it. So, so far, we've put those two substituents in the correct orientation to each other. Now, what we've got to do is look at how we get the CH3 on there. Now, looking at the chloro group, that's also 2 4 directing. So, that's going to direct to the equivalent uh, position next to it. A little bit like that. So now all three of them being put on there in the right orientation to each other. So let's now try an exam question of the type you might come across. So you can see quite clearly in an exam what they do is they would give you uh, the positions to which the new substituent is directed. So you don't really have to remember that much about the individual substituents, but you need to apply the information they give you. So, it says to draw all of the organic products from mono-substitution reactions. So be careful, mono-substitution here means one more substituent from your starting compound. So moving it all down a bit, you're looking at CN as your starting uh, substituent. So that must mean that at the position to the new substituent is uh, position number 3. So looking carefully at the reagents and conditions, that's going to chlorinate, isn't it? So you draw something like that. Bring it down a little bit further. You can see that this time the NHCOCH3 group is 2 4 um, uh, directing. So therefore, we have to think about what's going to happen here. Now, thinking about it carefully, it says the monosubstituted product, but it also has the plural there, so it's the possibility that there might be more than one product. So in this case, there is more than one product. One is the two, and one is the four substituted. So moving it down further, at the bottom of that page, there's a bit of the wind blowing in the background, I'm afraid. The reactions of uh, C6H5NCH32 are similar to the reactions of phenol. So it says to draw the organic product that is formed from the tri-substitution of uh, C6H5NCH32 with chlorine. So what we've got to do is have a quick look at the previous page to see what the, what the directing effect of this group is. Now if we look at the previous page, you can see that NCH32 is included. 
and that it's two for directing. So what we have to do is put on three chlorines in those positions. So they go on there like that. And then finally it asks you to explain why chlorine reacts much more readily with that compound, C6H5NCH32, than with benzene. So casting your mind back to the phenol work you've done, we can basically apply the same idea across here, so it's an application question. So this time you don't have an oxygen like you do in phenol, but you do have a nitrogen. And remember the nitrogen has a lone pair in it. Look at the diagram of pop the nitrogen's lone pair on, just so you can have a think about what that, that does. Obviously it now partially delocalizes into the pi ring. And that increases electron density in the pi ring compared to benzene. And as a result, chlorine has an induced dipole set up more easily than would happen in benzene. OK, so let's now have a look at the mark scheme, just to quickly check the different ways you could have said that. So quickly looking at what we had, we definitely got all those marks there. Notice it doesn't allow the 3 chloro product, because that would be suggesting the wrong directive effect. So the product we're looking for is this one, which we can take that one off as well. And we talked about a lone pair of electrons on the nitrogen. It's partially delocalized into the ring. I mean, the electron density is, in, is higher. Making sure we use the word delocalized. And it's talking about polarization. We talked about inducing a dipole. So we got the mark through that one there. OK, so hopefully this is a fairly useful clip to introduce you to directing groups. And thanks for your time listening, and hopefully see you soon.